Welcome to the introduction to matinee. In this first video, we're going to kick off the series by taking a look at what matinee is and talking about what it provides you inside of Unreal Engine 3. After that, we're then going to look at this very simple demonstration level that we've set up. We've got several different matinee sequences in them, mm -hmm. starting off with something very simple, which is just a very basic lift. Then we've got a door that's a bit more sophisticated as it has two different parts that open in different directions and a light that changes color. From there, we're going to look at a light dimming system that's going to take all of the lights in our room and dim them down and then bring them back up. Yep. And then from there, the last thing we're going to look at is a machinima sequence that we've set up that will basically play an in-game movie for you that's going to demonstrate camera cuts, fades, etc. Yeah. So a lot of different things to look at. And the nice thing is... Over this video series, we're going to be putting all of these things together. Now, don't think that these are the only things that Matinee can do. Matinee is huge. It can control almost everything. And in just a minute, we'll talk about the types of things that it can control. But I would like you to keep an open mind as you're watching this video series, realizing that there's so much more that can be done with Matinee. But this series is titled An Introduction to right. Matinee. Now, after we've done all of that, we're then going to take a look at the Matinee editor itself. And and matinee, you're going to find, is really nothing more than a Kismet sequence object. So we'll need to go into Kismet, and from there we'll be able to jump into the matinee editor, and we'll take a look at what a matinee editor looks like populated with groups and tracks, etc. And that'll pretty much wrap up the video, and then we will begin the journey of putting all of these sequences together. So, Zach, let's go ahead and start out by talking about what matinee is. Well, as you already mentioned, it is a Kismet sequence object in and of itself. It is responsible for key for frame animation of assets within your level. Ooh, I like that. Very nice, very compact. Now, uh, when you say keyframe animation, you start <laughs> to immediately wonder, you know, what are you animating? Because in, in the back of your head, you, say, you know, you say the word matinee, and you think it's all about movies. That's right. All about machinima, and it is true. You know, when you look at the cinematic sequences that come along with Unreal Tournament 3, you see some grandiose stuff, to say the very least. Absolutely, and all of that is being controlled through matinee. Right, everything from animated characters to any effects that popped up in the screen to any anything that has a property that is changing over time it's all being handled inside of matinee because in the end that's what it's all about using keyframe ad animation information to change a property over time that's right now what sort of things can it do well you name it i mean you want characters moving in your scene you want lifts opening you want uh, lifts yeah, just open. starting out with the basic stuff you're going to be doing things like doors right. open close lifts up down you know moving system a move oh if we have some machinery gear start turning this that and the other that's right all all of these basic things that you need to control, you're going to control them through matinee. And then we're going to, uh, from there, you're going to start learning things about like director tracks and how to do camera cuts, how to do camera fades, animating cameras, doing zooms, and the, the various cinematic things that you're used to seeing. But just keep in mind that matinee is, is so much more than that. It, really it actually is. has gameplay elements. Every door that opens in your level that you play. That's all done through matinee as well. So before we go too much further into that, let's take a look at this demonstration level we put together here. And we have several different matinee sequences, as Jason mentioned earlier. I'll just start off by firing this level up. And starting off here in the floor, we have this sort of dark panel. And what this is is a very, very basic lift system. If I stand on it, boom, we fly up into the air, wait a second, and then we come back down. Very simple. This is how we're going to kick things off in regards to the first matinee sequence that we're going to build, just so that you can see how to get something moving around in a level. That's right. Now, over here, we have a, a door. Notice it's got a r little red light on it. But before I walk through the door, let's take a look at this little switch that I've got over here on the wall next to the door. If I hit the E key while I'm standing next to it, ooh, we can turn the lights down turn them back up, and then I'll just leave them down for now. And you'll notice we are also logging a message out to the screen as well. We like to do that a lot in these demonstration videos. Just so that you guys are aware, as you're putting these things together, use these messages. Log them out. Give yourself feedback so that you know that things are being triggered properly internal inside of the different networks you've set up. That's right. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's working and what's not but if you don't log things to the screen. With the lights that Zach just demonstrated, keep in mind it wasn't a toggle. It wasn't just on then off. Instead, Zach was actually controlling the intensity of the lights, taking them from full bright down to dark, right. back up to bright again. And they were smoothly changing over time. It wasn't like the lights were blinking on or blinking off. There was a gradual change, and that's all, all where the keyframe animation comes in. Now, let's take a look at this door. We have a little red light over the top of the door, and if we walk over to open it up, ooh, the light turns green. If we step away, light turns red again. 
All of that is being handled through matinee. The animation of the material that is on the static mesh, the animation of the light that's aff- uh, affecting our entire scene, and the animation of the door. Also notice the messages that are being logged to the screen, provided you can actually read those on the video. We get the door is open, and then when the door closes, we get the door is closed. Now over here inside this room... Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait. Right. Before we jump onto oh. the machinima sequence, let's go ahead and... But take I was a- so excited. I know you were. But let's show them that you've also got a switch for controlling the light intensity inside this room as oh, well. Oh, yeah. I forgot. So there's another uh, copy of this switch, and if we hit that, boom, we can bring the it lights back up. brings the lights up. back up. So the two switches work together. One can dim, the other one can bring it back up, and vice versa. It's like those lights that I have in the hallway of my house. <laughs> All right, so now if I come over here to this trigger, I can use it, and we get a little message that pops up. says, uh, enable cinematic sequence. And that's the neat thing to understand here. He's enabled something within his level. So now when he walks through the door, the door is going to act differently than it did just a minute ago. So we've now changed the way the door is reacting, as we saw a few seconds ago. Watch this. Go ahead and walk through the door. So he walks through, and, oh, control is removed from him, and we now have two different cameras. We've got some zoom, some camera movement. We even had a fade up and a fade back out. And during that time, Zach was actually locked out and could not control the player at all. So if we wanted to have doors open and different monsters jump out or whatever, we could have done all of that right there. So once the sequence was done, basically control was handed back to Zach. He's now looking back through his own HUD, and he's back off. And watch this. If he walks back through the door again, Again, aha, that's right. the sequence has now been disabled, and it's not going to play again. Because if you wanted something like that to actually happen inside a level, let's say it was something that you were using to tell part of your story, you wouldn't want it to happen again and again every yeah. time the actor hit that certain sequence. If for some reason you've got to backtrack through the level, you don't want that movie to play each time you pass through the doorway. That would get lame after, well, the first time. <laughs> exactly. So that's a quick look at the different matinee sequences that we're going to be setting up as we work our way through this introduction to matinee matinee video series. Let's take a look now at where we can find matinee. It's uh, within the Unreal Kismet editor, so I'll just open up Kismet. And in this particular case, I have all of my sequences divided up into nice sub-sequences. I'm going to double-click on this door sequence you see here. And we Ooh, see stuff. Yeah, the star of the show, the great big matinee sequence object. And you can see all sorts of things connected into this. We have a, a matinee data node, which is handling all of our keyframe information and a lot of other things as well. But we'll talk more about that once we actually Some easy get into stuff it. on the left-hand side. Play, reverse, yep. stop, pause, pause, change direction. And Ooh. we'll cover all of these inputs a little bit later. We can see that we are affecting many different objects that are plugged in here to the bottom of the, of the, uh, the node itself. And then... And based on what happens with the sequence, we're firing off other Kismet operations as well. We're sending some stuff out to the screen and some uh, remote events that we'll discuss later. Now, what I want to do now is show you what happens when you just create a basic matinee sequence object here inside of Kismet. If I right-click and choose New Matinee, boom, we actually get two nodes instead of we get two for the price of one. That's right. We get the matinee sequence object itself, and this is where you're going to be doing all of your work. Inside of this node, you'll find the matinee uh, editor. Now, underneath this, automatically came in and is automatically connected to it, we get the matinee data node. This is where all of the different tracks, all of the groups, all of the keyframe information... In really, essence, all of the matinee data. Right. Everything, everything that is important to making our matinee sequence work is going to end up getting stored here inside this node. And every single matinee sequence object you create is going to have one of these. Now, if Zach goes up to the matinee sequence object and double clicks on it, this is going to bring up the Unreal Matinee Editor. And here she is. As a matter of fact, Zach, go ahead and show the curve editor as well. Let's go ahead and bring it up. There you go. So yours might happen to start out like this. Uh, it may have the curve editor being displayed or hidden, either of the way. Mm-hmm. But this is it. This is a matinee editor that is empty at the moment. So let's close this one. And now let's go ahead and jump back over. We'll kill those out. Let's jump back over to the one that's in use, and let's show them one that's full of information and data. So here's one of all sorts of things going on. We've got a curve that was uh, in the middle of being edited here, so the curve editor's actually got something in it. For now, I'll close the curve editor by clicking on the toggle button up here in the toolbar, and we can see we have a big, long list of various groups and tracks. We have some keyframe information taking place in here. I can select uh, one of these tracks, and we get some properties that pop up down here on the bottom. And we're going to be talking about this editor and its user interface and how you can go about putting it to use uh, as we proceed through these introductory videos. That's it.
That is it, guys. So now you have a basic understanding of what Matinee provides for you in Unreal Engine 3. You've seen how it can control lifts, doors, lights, properties, etc., and even give machinimatic... Machinimatic. machinimatic. I like it. <laughs> you like that word, don't yeah. you? Uh, machinima sequences. And um, with that, I guess it's time for us to really begin our journey of taking a look at the editor and then putting together these sequences on video. Let's get started. <laughs> 